All right, hey guys, welcome back to the garage. Today we're gonna to be working on the Miata. I'm sure you saw some of the sneak peeks coming up through the channel, and today we're actually gonna get into it. So one thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna swap out the clutch, and this is where we're gonna get started with the car. Currently, the throwout bearing is squealing, so I need to replace that, but while I'm in there and I have to drop the trans to get to it anyway, I might as well go ahead and upgrade the clutch. So this one is rated pretty high, especially for um, it being called their level one. I think it's rated up to 280 foot-pounds of torque, which is way more than what we're going to make on this naturally aspirated Miata. So come along for the ride and we'll show you how to do it. Alright team, so the first thing that we did was, since this is such a small car, we went ahead and jacked it up first and now we're going to start working on uh, removing some of the interior pieces around the transmission tunnel. So if you want to follow me around here, Daniel. What we're going to be looking for to take off is this shrouding around the shifter as well as the rest of this center console area. So we're going to have to take off the shift knob, there's a few little screws uh, around here, down inside the bin. And then I think inside the little ashtray there that we use as a coin catcher. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on taking that apart and we're gonna get everything on the top side completed and then we'll start on the bottom side and I'm doing drive shaft and then we'll start getting all the bell housing bolts out. So we'll see you there. So we got uh, the hardware taken care of here and always want to organize your stuff in little Ziploc bags. Uh, just so they don't go walking away and you know where they go and belong. So one thing with the shifter up here is there's this little trim piece. When you try to pull it up, it's, it's kind of stuck in there. So you can take yourself a little uh, body panel tool and run it up the sides here. And it's got two clips on the front, two on the sides, and then a little uh, swing on the bottom. So now we have access to down in here. Um, there's a couple of screws here that go into the center console that we might loosen up to give us a little extra wiggle room here uh, but this should all come off in uh, just one big piece there we go and then dan if you could get the window plug Yep, gotta do it both hands. All right, so we got the, Dan helped out with getting the window plug undone there, and now we can lift this whole guy out, and now it's out of the way. So it's nice and clean down in here, and now we can get the sound deadening material out of the way, and we'll take uh, these four bolts off here, lift this plate up, you can kind of see this thing is due for replacement. It's, it's all cracked up and everything like that. So that's what seals around the, the shank there to help keep um, the environment from the outside, anything getting kicked up uh, into the cabin. So we may look at buying a new one of these uh, in the future just to clean it up. So we uh, got that little uh, beauty plate off and we can see now we have the shifter directly to the end of the transmission here. Uh, another trick that I like to use is put bolts back where you found them whenever you remove stuff, as long as it's not gonna be in the way. This way uh, you know for sure you're gonna be able to get all your hardware back uh, exactly where it belongs. So our next step now is we're gonna get underneath the car, start undoing the drive shaft from the diff pull that bad boy out and uh, start working on the uh, bell housing bolts. All right, now we're on the bottom side of the car and we're gonna have to take a few things apart. So we're gonna have to drop the exhaust here. Um, we're gonna have to drop it from up front and the, essentially the whole cat back is gonna have to move. Um, another thing that we need to do that's unique to Miata's is this uh, power brace here. Um, it, attaches the transmission all the way down to the diff mount. Um, so it, it kind of acts as a nice rigidity point all the way across. Now, 
These do have some slotted holes in them, so you need to mark exactly where all these bolts are so it aligns back up when we put it back together. So we'll have to take these bolts off the front, these three bolts off the front here, and then on the back there's two, um, but we'll only need to take the front one off, and then there's a little sleeve bushing that it goes into that we'll remove as well, and then we can swing it out of the way. Once we get those two out of the way, the next thing is to get the drive shaft undone. So we'll unbolt it from the back of the diff down on that end, and then it's just a little slip fit on the front that goes into the output shaft of the transmission. And we'll slide that out, get that out of the way, um, and then we'll be ready to start messing with the, the transmission itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on dropping the exhaust, then we'll do the power brace, then we'll do the drive shaft. So we'll, we'll see you on the other side. Okay, so we got the long section of the exhaust off. Now we need to get this other small section that runs up next to the transmission. So there's two more bolts that we need that are right here. You can see one here and then one right on the other side. I went ahead and threw some WD-40 on there to help it out. Um, we got the rest of the exhaust off over there. Um, don't forget to undo that O2 sensor and it actually comes off relative, ours came off relatively easily. So, so far everything's been um, pretty nice to us. We'll see if that, uh, see if our luck continues or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, crawl back under the car, get this last little chunk of the exhaust off. And, uh, oh yeah, and then there's a little bracket that attaches that to the side of the transmission housing. So just undo those three bolts, that should drop out. And the next thing we'll work on is that power brace. So we've gotten the exhaust off now and I'm starting to prep up getting this power brace and some of the transmission apart. So there's a few sensors, uh, cables that you unplug up here. And then what I did is I traced out uh, this plate and where these bolts all align all the way along the, the power brace. So when we put it back on, we make sure that it's put back together in the exact same orientation. Um, so the next thing is taking care of the slave cylinder just make sure when you unbolt that um, so there's two little bolts one on each side one here and then one up above it and then you you can move the slave cylinder off to the side do not push down your clutch with the slave um, unconnected uh, because it'll just shoot the piston right out of the back of it and then you're gonna have a uh, a huge mess on the floor so now that we've gotten everything kind of undone we're gonna start working on getting this power brace out of the way and then we'll get the axle done, uh, but we'll likely have to drain the transmission because we don't want it coming out of the back of the output shaft um, through there when the axle comes out. Uh, so that's next is power brace, and then we'll drain the trans and then get the drive shaft off. Gotta have the shop pup. Mm -hmm. All right, team. So to drain this plug, uh, this is a 24 millimeter uh, plug. This is your drain, but you always want to make sure that your fill plug can come out. So that's actually right here on the side of the trans. There we go. And it's a, it's a square head, so you'll want to use a box wrench on that. And it was 14 millimeters. Always make sure that you can get your fill plug out uh, before you drain. Because if you drain it and you can't get your fill plug out, then you're kind of hosed. You're going to have to drill it out and all that kind of stuff. Uh, one nice thing with a lot of transmissions is if the fill plug is seized, you can actually take the shifter off from the top side 
and um, remove the entire shifter assembly from the top of the transmission and fill the transmission through that hole and then you'll have to reassemble the, the shifter into the top. So that is a workaround if your fill plug is seized onto your transmission. So we went ahead and got that all drained. Uh, we're supporting the transmission just so we don't put extra strain on the motor mounts. And now we just need to slide the drive shaft out. There we go. Set that down on my rag. All right, and now we're ready to start taking off bell housing bolts. So one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little piece of cardboard and kind of mock out the circle that goes around and we're gonna stick the bolts into the cardboard where we take it out. Because there are going to be different sizes and lengths and the last thing you wanna do is put a long bolt into a, a blind short hole because you'll end up cracking uh, the engine side. Uh, so to get around that, we're gonna make sure we mark out where these bolts come out of so we make sure the they go back in the exact same spot. Okay. Go ahead and roll it a little bit. All right. Here we go, lower. Slowly and down. I'm just going it super, super slow. Okay, here we go. You might have to undo the shifter. Okay, I guess. Yeah. Undo. We'll stop from there. All right, one more. Okay, we're jammed up. Oh, oh, oh nope, we're good. Good? Okay. Yep. Okay. You going down? Yep. Okay. You good? Do you need to get it out of the way? I did. Okay. Lower it a little more. Keep going. Coming down, coming down, coming down. There you go. You're in the clear. Okay. I want to scoot it back some? Nope. Okay. Coming down, coming down. Oh, oh now we'll go back. Hold on. Okay. I'll get it back up some. Go. Oh, watch out, you're pulling it in the jack from underneath the trans. Oh. <laughs> Alright, now you're a little bit <laughs> I got the trans right now. Okay. But not for long. Can I get it in? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna lift. Put it, put it where you want. There we go. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ready? Now, I want you to carefully push it to the passenger side. The whole thing? Just the bell housing side. Because we got a like tab there that's hitting the subframe. Okay. So go ahead and lower it just a little bit. It's out! <laughs> Hell yeah. We got it. Yep. Now let's see if we can uh, wiggle it out of here or if we have to do the clutch with it down here as well. Yeah, if we can't get this out, then we'll just slide it back towards the diff. We've got quite a bit of room in the trans tunnel, but we got it down. Um, we are able to get all the bolts and nuts off. So here's your little reference guide. Uh, the top there is the top of the trans and it goes around in that circle uh, and then this one has just a nut but i put a little screwdriver there to hold it so it doesn't fly away on us um but yeah now we get to take a look at the clutch for the first time there we go yeah nice little stock unit well there's your problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah so while well, we were taking it apart Rear remains leaking, so I'm going to have to pick one of those up and uh, we'll get that swapped out. We'll show you guys how to do it. Uh, also, the stock clutch came out, 
the flywheel is pretty toasty. So we're gonna have to, at a minimum, resurface it um, or maybe replace it. I'm gonna take a look at a couple things when I'm shopping around. Um, so this is where we're gonna end it for today. We got everything out. Now I need to go get a rear main seal and uh, get everything ready for reinstallation. So thanks for coming along today on how to take everything apart. And uh, we'll meet you up tomorrow to uh, start working on the install. Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. This is our second part of putting the clutch and the flywheel uh, back together on the old Miata here. So I got the old um, uh, rear main seal out, which you kind of saw that in the time lapse there. And now I'm getting ready to put in the flywheel. And we went ahead and got an aftermarket unit here. Um, and I went ahead and put in the uh, pilot bearing there that's in the center. You just use a large socket that's about the same di outer diameter as your, uh, your bearing there, and you can tap it in. So I just use one of my big impact sockets, and then you can just tap that in there, and you can see it's about the same size as that outer diameter. You do not want to hit anything on the black seal or on this inner part, otherwise you're just going to blow your bearing apart. Um, another trick for that is throw your bearing into the freezer, and it'll actually shrink the metal just ever so slightly and it'll help you tap it in there a little bit easier. So now that we've got everything prepped up, I got the rear main seal taken care of. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and throw that flywheel on there, shoot you some time lapse, and I'll see you on the other side. just wrapped up doing all the work on the Miata. So we did the rear main seal, a new flywheel, new clutch, new pressure plate, uh, got everything pulled out of the bottom, new trans fluid, just put everything back together, got the interior put back together. And now we're gonna get ready to do our first start and try to drive around the neighborhood, make sure everything's nice and snug and tight. And uh, yeah, it's been quite the adventure and I definitely don't recommend doing transmission jobs or clutch jobs on the floor, but if you have to, have to, it absolutely can be done. So me and Daniel spent uh, two weekends and total like two and a half days on this, taking breaks, having fun, watching racing, and uh, just kind of doing it at our own time. So that's the kind of time frame that you probably want to plan for, unless you have a lift, then it'll make it a lot easier and a lot quicker. go we got her on the road shift in feels great What do you think? Yeah, there she is. Clutch is super smooth, engages at the bottom, drives like a champ. So next time you'll see this is uh, we'll be out on the racetrack. <laughs> 